The Katame no Kata were established in 1884 and 5 after the Nage no Kata. They're made up of three sets of techniques, each consisting of five representative techniques from Osaikomi Waza, Shime Waza, and Kansetsu Waza. By practicing the kata, the idea is to master the theoretical basis for executing and evading each technique. In 1882, Master Jigoro Kano founded Kodokan Judo, establishing the Randori method based on Nagewaza and Katamewaza. Since then, theoretical research has led to the introduction of numerous new techniques. Together, the Nage no Kata and the Katame no Kata form the Randori no Kata, which were established to enable practitioners to understand and master the principles. Let's begin with the bowing. Take special note of the distance between the tori and uke and their positions. The tori and uke stand facing each other at a distance of about 5.5 meters. The tori is on the left. They turn towards the front and make a standing bow, then face each other to sit and bow. Together they stand and step forward on their left foot and into Shizen Hontai. The tori draws his left foot back and kneels, turning his right knee outwards. This kneeling posture is called Kyoshi Ukurai Dori. All action commences from this posture. The right knee is more or less at a right angle. The left leg and hip should be aligned. He places his right hand on his knee and allows his left hand to hang naturally. Let's take another look at how the tori steps forward and back. He then kneels in Kyoshi, stands up and assumes Shizen Hontai. And now let's see what the uke does when he lies back or gets up. He places his right hand on the mat in front of his left knee with the fingers turned to the left. Supporting his body with his right hand and left foot, he lies back. To get up, he supports his body with his right hand and left foot to lift his hips, draw his right foot back and resume the Kyoshi kneeling posture. The Osaikomiwaza are made up of five techniques as shown. And now from the end of the bowing to the beginning of Kesagatame. From Kyoshi, the uke takes one step forward and lies down. The tori stands up and assumes Shizen Hontai. He moves towards the uke's right until he's about 1.2 meters away and assumes Kyoshi. This distance is known as toma, or the far position. He takes two more steps to be within a 30 centimeter reach of the uke. This is chikama, or the near position. The tori moves in and applies kesagatame. The uke is unable to break the hold and gives the signal for defeat. Mairi, give up. They both resume their positions at the beginning of Kesagatame. The tori returns to Chikama and assumes Kyoshi. Toma is a distance of about 1.2 meters. Chikama is about 30 centimeters.
The tori moves slightly forward and traps the uke's right arm in his left armpit. He then slips his right hand under the uke's left armpit, pressing his body against the uke's to apply kesakatame. The uke attempts to escape in three ways, but is unable to get up. He signals Mairi, give up. To signal give up, the uke should either tap the tori's body or the mat twice or kick the floor. Using both hands, the tori traps the uke's right arm in his left armpit. He lowers himself onto his right hip to pass his right hand under the uke's left armpit and place it on the left shoulder. The tori puts his right knee under the uke's right shoulder while bending his left leg, placing the inside of his knee on the mat. He presses his body firmly against the uke and applies the hold. Once the tori has applied the hold by pulling strongly with both hands, the uke tries to escape in three ways. He first tries to twist the tori's left elbow. He then tries to twist his body to insert his right knee between himself and the tori. And finally, he tries to flip the tori over his left shoulder. The first escape method, the uke brings his right hand over to his left to try and twist the tori's left elbow. By doing so, it's possible to lock the elbow. The second escape method is to twist to the right and slide his knee under the tori's hips. The uke can break the hold by trapping the tori's right leg between his legs. The third method consists of grabbing the back of the tori's belt with his left hand and the front of the belt with his right to flip the tori over the left shoulder. By doing so, the uke can hold the tori down and attack. Although these are the three basic methods of escape, it's possible to try other appropriate methods. Whatever method he adopts, the uke must take advantage of the tori's position to break his hold. Although this technique is now referred to as kuzure kesagatame, it was referred to collectively as kesagatame when the katame no kata were established. From Kesagatame to Katagatame. Unable to escape from the Kesagatame, the uke signals give up. The tori then retreats to Chikama to apply Katagatame. From Chikama, the tori moves forward a bit more to apply Katagatame. The uke attempts to escape, trying three methods, but is unable to get up and signals give up. To apply the katagatame, the tori uses both hands to push the uke's right arm up and lock the elbow. Pressing against the uke's right cheek, he wraps his arms around the uke and tightens his grip. The tori wraps his right arm around the uke's right arm and neck. He then clasps his hands under the uke to form a cross, the right hand on top.
Pressing the uke's right arm against his right cheek, he presses his right knee against the uke's right side, making sure that his instep is off the mat. He extends his left leg to the side. This is a bad example. The Tori's right knee is pressed against the uke's armpit instead of his side, and his left leg is bent. Let's look at the uke's attempts to escape the hold. He attempts three methods, first by pushing up with his elbows, secondly by slipping his knee under the Tori's hip, and finally by rolling backward over his left shoulder. Let's take a close look at the uke's efforts to escape the hold. First of all, he presses his right fist against his left palm and pushes up with his elbows to loosen the hold. He is able to escape by turning over. The next thing he tries is to twist and slip his right knee under the Tori's hip. He then sandwiches the Tori's right leg between his legs to escape the hold. The last thing he tries is to roll backward over his left shoulder. He manages to break the hold by turning over. Study the attack and defence, taking special note of the Tori's response to the Uke's attempts at escaping. Proceeding now from Katagatame to Kamishihogatame. After the uke has signalled give up, the tori retreats from Chikama to Toma and assumes the kneeling posture, Kyoshi. He stands in Shizen Hontai and turns left to move to the Toma position above the uke's head. He then moves closer to the Chikama position. The Tori applies Kamishihogatame. The uke signals give up and the tori retreats to Chikama. The tori moves closer from Chikama to kneel on his right and presses down with his body. After the uke signals give up, the tori moves slightly back to the chikama position. Let's look at the main points of kamishihogatame. The tori slides both hands under the uke's shoulders to grab both sides of his belt. The thumb should be turned inward when grabbing the belt. 
The tori brings his knees towards the uke's shoulders, feet pressed down. The uke attempts to escape the hold. First, by wrapping his arm around the tori's neck to push his head to the side. He then tries inserting his left hand under the tori's arm to twist to the side. Finally, he tries pushing the tori's shoulders up with both hands, slipping his knees between their bodies. Let's take another look at the uke's attempts to escape. He wraps his left arm around the tori's neck to try and flip him over. Once he succeeds in flipping the tori over, he can hold him down. He slips his left hand under the uke's arm and tries to escape by twisting to the side. He can escape the hold by turning over. He pushes the tori's shoulders up with both hands and tries to slip his knees between their bodies. By pushing the tori up and sliding both knees between their bodies, he can turn over and escape the hold. He can also roll backwards and attack by grabbing from behind. This time, note how the tori uses his legs and hips to keep the uke under control. As soon as the uke tries to break loose, the tori presses down with his feet so his instep is off the mat and restrains the uke. Once the uke gives up and the tori can resume the hold, he plants his feet back on the mat. Now from Kamishihogatame to Yokoshihogatame. After the uke signals give up, the tori moves back from Shikama to the Toma position. He stands up and assumes Shizen Hontai and then moves to the uke's right and moves in from Toma to the Chikama position. He applies the Yoko Shiho Gatame. After the Uke signals give up, the tori moves back to the chikama position. The tori draws near the uke and lifts the uke's right arm with both hands to lay it down to his left. Moving further in, he applies the hold. Now the main points of Yoko Shihogatame. The tori grabs the left side of the uke's belt with his right hand and the left collar with his left. He lowers his hips, making sure that his insteps remain off the floor. Turning his face to the left, he presses down to apply the hold. Let's take a close look at what the tori does with the uke's right arm. 
he picks up the arm with both hands and lays it down to his left, pressing his left knee against the uke's armpit. The position of the arm is incorrect. It should not be over the head. The tori grabs the belt first with his left hand, thumb inside, and then switches to his right. Let's watch that again. Now look at what the uke does to escape the hold. He pushes the left side of the tori's neck with his left hand and attempts to hook the tori's head with his left leg. He twists his hips and tries to slip his right knee under the tori's hips. He grabs the back of the belt with his left hand and tries to flip the tori over. Now a closer look at the uke's attempts to break the hold. He presses his left hand against the left side of the tori's head and pushes the left armpit up with his right hand, trying to hook the tori's head with his left leg. By locking the tori's neck and right arm, the uke manages to escape the hold. Next, he tries twisting his hips to the right to slip his knee under the tori's hips. He manages to break the hold by locking the tori's right leg. Finally, he grabs the back of the belt with his left hand and the front of the belt with his right to flip the tori over. By flipping the tori over, the uke manages to escape the hold. Let's look at it again, taking special note of how the tori responds to the uke's attempts. From Yoko Shihogatame to Kuzure Kami Shihogatame. The tori applies the kuzure kami shihogatame. After the uke signals give up, the tori moves back from chikama to toma and assumes kyoshi, kneeling posture. From Chikama, the tori moves slightly forward and then moves in towards the uke's right shoulder to apply the hold.
The Tori takes the uke's right arm from the inside with his right hand and, using his left hand as well, pulls it toward him. He slides his right hand under the uke's right shoulder to grab the back of the collar and slips his left hand under the left shoulder to grab the side of the belt. Take a close look at the Tori's grip on the collar. The thumb should be outside. Grabbing the side of the belt with his left hand, the Tori presses down with his chest to apply the hold, making sure that his insteps are off the mat. Now let's take a look at the Uke's three attempts to break the hold. First of all, he pulls his right arm free and tries twisting to the right. Next, he inserts his left knee between their bodies. And finally, he tries to flip the tori to the left. The first attempt involves pushing the tori's chin with his left hand as he presses his right hand against the tori's groin. He then twists his body to free his right arm. By pulling his right arm free and turning over, the uke manages to escape the hold. Next, he tries pushing the tori's chin up with his left hand, inserting his left knee between their bodies. By inserting his knee and creating some space between them, the uke manages to turn over and escape the hold. Finally, the uke grips the back of the belt with his left hand and the front with his right hand to press up and flip the tori to the left. By flipping the tori over, the uke is able to hold him down. Let's take another look, this time observing the mechanism of attack and defence. They need to respond to each other precisely. And now from Kuzure Kamishi Hogatame to Shimewaza. From Chikama, the Tori returns to Toma and assumes Kyoshi. The Uke gets up and they both readjust their judogi. There are five Shimewaza techniques as shown here. The Uke assumes the prone position again. The tori moves towards the uke's right and applies the kata jujijime. Let's take a look at the kata jujijime. The tori takes the uke's right arm and lays it to his left, as in yoko shihogatame. 
He moves in and straddles the uke to apply the choke. The tori grips the left collar deeply with his left hand, thumb outside. Straddling the uke, he pushes the uke's left arm to the side with his right hand so that it's at shoulder level. He then twists the uke's head and grabs the right collar, thumb inside, to apply the choke. The tori leans forward, pulling with his left hand and pushing with his right to apply the choke. The uke presses both hands against the tori's elbows and arches his back to defend himself. From Kata Jujijime to Hadakajime. As the tori stands and moves towards the uke's head, the uke sits up and bends his left knee, placing the tip of his foot behind his right knee. His right leg is slightly bent. The tori moves in from Toma to Chikama continuing to close in until he's directly behind the uke. He then applies the hadakajime. The tori clasps his hands over the uke's shoulders, palms crossed, and applies the choke. He passes his right arm over the uke's right shoulder and across the throat, pressing his forearm against the uke's throat. He then places his left hand palm up on the uke's left shoulder and clasps his right hand to apply the choke. Clasping his hands together, he applies the choke. The uke tries to defend himself by pulling down on the tori's arm with both hands. The tori draws his left leg back, then right, to break the uke's balance to the rear and apply the choke. The tori releases the uke and returns to Chikama to begin Okuri Erijime. The tori moves up close until he's directly behind the uke and applies the choke. The tori pulls down on the uke's left collar and presses the thumb side of his right wrist against the left side of the uke's neck to grip deep into the left collar. He grips the uke's right collar with his left hand and presses his right cheek against the uke's left cheek. Moving slightly back, he breaks the uke's balance to the rear to choke him. The uke tries to loosen the choke by pulling down on the tori's right arm with both hands. The tori moves in slightly to release the uke and begin the katahajime.
The tori moves behind the uke to apply the katahajime. The tori grips the uke's left collar deeply with his right hand and slides his left hand under the uke's left arm to press the elbow up high, breaking his balance to the rear. The tori then draws his right foot back, twisting to the right as he slides his left hand under his right arm to apply the choke. The tori slides his left hand under his right arm, fingers extended and the palm facing inwards to apply the choke. The uke grabs the tori's left wrist with his right hand and tries to pull down. From kata hajime to gyaku jujijime. The tori moves to the uke's right while the uke assumes a prone position. The tori moves slightly in and moves the uke's right arm to his left. He moves closer and applies the gyaku jujijime. The tori grabs deep into the uke's left collar with his left hand, thumb outside, and pushes the uke's left arm outwards with his right hand, straddling him. He then takes firm hold of the uke's right collar using a reverse grip so that his arms are crossed. He then pulls with both hands to apply the choke. The uke presses the tori's elbows up with both hands to break the hold. The tori seizes this opportunity to roll onto his left and squeeze the uke's body between his legs, crossing his ankles and pulling with both hands to apply the choke. This is a bad example in which the uke is on top making it possible for him to stand up and escape the choke. The tori forces the uke on his side to weaken his resistance. The tori releases his hold and returns to chikama and then to toma to stand. And the uke sits up and assumes kyoshi. They both readjust their judogi and proceed to kansetsu waza. This set is comprised of five techniques, as shown here. The uke assumes a prone position again. The tori stands up and moves towards the uke's right. He moves slightly closer and applies the udegarami.
The tori shows his intention to attack as he moves towards the uke. He takes the uke's left wrist and applies the ude garami. Let's look at that again. The uke tries to grab the tori's collar, but the tori takes the uke's wrist with his left hand. He slides his right hand under the uke's arm and seizes the left wrist to apply the lock. The tori presses the uke's left elbow down on the mat just above his left shoulder. Bending the left arm at a right angle, he draws both wrists towards him to apply the lock. The uke twists his left wrist inwards and raises his left shoulder and hip in an attempt to break the lock. And now from Ude Garami to Ude Hishigi Jujigatame. The tori demonstrates his intention to attack as he moves slightly towards the uke. Just as the uke is about to grab his left collar, he locks the elbow. The tori takes the uke's right wrist and pulls up, pressing the tip of his right foot against the armpit. He swings his left leg over the uke's head and traps the uke's upper right arm between his legs, pulling the arm up to lock the elbow. The tori applies the lock, twisting the uke's arm so that the thumb is turned away from him. The uke raises his hips and draws his right arm towards him, twisting to the left in an effort to escape. From Ude Hishigi Jujigatame to Ude Hishigi Udegatame. The tori demonstrates his intention to attack. Just as the uke is about to grab his right collar, he lowers his body and traps the uke's left wrist between his neck and shoulder to lock the elbow with both hands. Let's take a look at how the tori uses his neck, shoulder and hands to apply the lock. He presses his right palm against the uke's elbow and places his left hand over his right, tightening his own elbows to draw the uke's elbow towards him. He then twists to the left to lock the arm. He presses his right shin against the uke's lower ribs to prevent him getting up. The uke tries to escape by pulling his left arm free. From Ude Hishigi Ude Gatame to Ude Hishigi Hizagatame. The tori stands up and advances to a position above the uke's head. In the meantime, the uke sits up and assumes kyoshi. The tori advances from Toma to Chikama. They both move slightly forward to engage in the right basic hole and enter into the Ude Hishigi Hizagatame. The tori traps the uke's right arm under his armpit and presses the left knee against the uke's right elbow to lock the arm.
The Tori slips his left hand under and over the Uke's right arm to draw it towards him and trap the Uke's wrist in his armpit. He presses his palm against the Uke's right elbow to lock it. The Tori breaks the Uke's balance to the front and presses his right foot against the Uke's groin to fall backwards. He twists to the right and pushes with both feet to lock the elbow. The Tori should push the Uke's back with the tip of his left foot while pressing his left hand against the inside of his knee. The Uke tries to escape by pushing his right arm between their bodies. They both stand and move on to the final technique in the katami no kata, ashigarami. When the kata were first introduced, ashigarami qualified as a randori technique, but now it's prohibited. The tori hooks his left leg over the uke's right leg to lock it. The tori attempts a tomoe nage, but the uke steps forward with his right foot and tries to lift him. At that moment, however, the tori shifts his hips to the right and presses the back of his foot against the inside of the uke's left knee to pull him forward, hooking his leg over the uke's right. Here's how to hook the leg. The tori brings his left leg around the uke's right leg from behind and wedges his left foot against the uke's lower abdomen, twisting his hips to the right. He straightens his left leg and pulls with both hands to lock the knee. The uke attempts to escape by twisting to the left. The tori and uke move apart and assume kyoshi. From chikama, the tori takes two steps back to toma. The uke takes one step back to return to his starting position. They both stand and assume shizen hontai. They then return to their positions at the start of the kata. Let's review the katame no kata. The first technique in the set of Osai Komi Waza is Kesagatame. The tori traps the uke's right arm in his armpit, pressing his body firmly against the uke's with his legs spread wide apart. The uke makes three attempts to escape. Katagatame consists of controlling the uke's arm and neck with the left leg extended to apply the hold. The principles behind the three attempts at escaping must be linked.
The third technique is kami shiho gatame. The tori traps the uke's arms with both of his arms, lowers his hips and applies the hold, making sure that his insteps are off the floor. Yoko Shihogatame. The tori grabs the left side of the uke's belt with his right hand and grips the uke's left collar with his left hand. He presses both knees against the uke and holds him down. The final osai komiwaza is kuzure kami shihogatame. The tori takes the uke's right arm with his right hand and traps it under his arm, grabbing the back of the collar. With his left hand, he grabs the left side of the uke's belt, presses his chest against the uke's and applies the hold. The first of the shimewaza techniques is kata jujijime. The tori uses a reverse grip to take the uke's left collar with his left hand and grabs the right collar with his right hand, pulling the uke towards him to apply the choke. Hadakajime. The tori presses his right hand against the uke's throat and presses his right cheek against the uke's left cheek. He clasps his hands, draws slightly back and breaks the uke's balance to the rear to apply the choke. In Okuri Erijime, the tori grabs the uke's left collar with his right hand and pulls down with his left. Katahajime. The tori slides his left hand under the uke's right arm, turning slightly to the right to apply the choke.
In Gyaku Jujijime, the tori applies the choke with both hands, thumb outside, turning sideways. The first technique in the set of Kansetsu Waza is Ude Garemi. The tori bends the uke's left elbow at a right angle and presses it down on the mat near his left shoulder. The second technique is Ude Hishigi Jujigatame. The tori pulls the uke's arm out from his body at a right angle, turning the arm so that the thumb is facing away from him. Ude Hishigi Ude Gatame. The tori uses his neck and shoulder to trap the arm, pressing both palms against it to pull while twisting to the left. In Ude Hishigi Hizagatame, the tori traps the uke's body with both feet, turns and presses his left knee against his left hand to apply the lock. The last of the kansetsu waza is Ashigarami. The tori wedges his left foot against the uke's lower abdomen. Twisting his hips, he straightens his leg to pull with both hands. After Ashigarami, the tori and uke move slightly away from each other and assume kyoshi. The tori takes two steps back and the uke one to return to their starting positions and bow. The Katame no Kata is designed to help in the understanding and mastery of the basic principles of the original Katame Waza established when Kodokan Judo was founded, and apply the theory to Randori Waza. Although it's easy to fall into a mere imitation of form, the Kata should be practiced so that the principles of attack and defense are reflected accurately, and so that the strength and vitality inherent in the techniques are conveyed.